So the new camera engine from Duelist Nexus is already putting in that work for some players at regionals, but it's just a matter of time before it starts popping off at YCSS2. And before knowing how to counter it, you first need to know how it works. The Chimera engine is made out of 5 main deck cards and 2 fusion monsters. And it especially works in tandem with other engines. So obviously everybody and their mother is maxing out on 3 branded fusion, 1 to 2 copies of Fallen of Albaz, but not everybody is sure whether or not they want to play branded opening and a luber. So when people do use branded fusion in the Chimera deck, you can expect them to end on Mirror Jade or Rinbrum. I mean, they are by far the best fusion monsters that you can summon off a of branded fusion in the Chimera deck, and again, that deck is not really a Despia deck, so there is no Ad Libitium and there is no branded in red. Another engine that is seeing a decent amount of play is the Fright Fur package. So Patchwork allows you to search polymerization and edge him chain, which gives you easier access to Guardian Chimera, and obviously that card is really good for going second because it breaks boards, especially when you get to chain block and when you have polymerization in the grave. Because that way you get to play around Ash, Valor, Imperm, everything. Guardian Chimera is just such a good card, right? You want to summon it on your own turn, on your opponent's turn, and it's an out to a Ryzart without having to rely on Book of Moon and stuff like that. Unfortunately, this engine is not without drawbacks. These cards do nothing on their own, so it's really hard to survive just on them. Also, you already have to commit in order to go into Guardian Chimera. It's not the kind of thing that you can just do out of the blue. So some people are just cutting the Fright for Engine and are playing the Fusion Destiny package instead. It single-handedly summons Destiny Hero Destroy Phoenix Enforcer while getting the Dasher and Celestial into the graveyard. DPE is a really nice and handy spot removal that can also be an interruption on your opponent's turn and a way to push through interruptions on your own turn. And then Celestial, of course, is a Pot of Greed next turn. There is no Anaconda, though, so the goal is to really draw Fusion Destiny and you're pretty much on a ratio of three cards to two bad cards. Now, the bad news for you if you're playing against that deck is that you have to worry about so many potential Ash baits. They can bait your Ash with Fusion Destiny, Branded Fusion, and whatever else they might have. But then again, they also have to commit to some bricks in order to make the Branded Fusion package and the Fusion Destiny package live. So imagine Kashtira Ryzard banishing three cards from the top of the deck, and then there's like the one of Fallen of Albaz and like a Celestial. Fantastic, now half of your deck does nothing. Okay, maybe not half, but whatever, you get the point. But to be honest, these are the only really relevant engines that are being played in the Kashtira deck right now. I'm not gonna count standalone cards like 3 Fenrir because, bro, like, you're not really going to prepare just for that. But yet, yeah, what are they trying to do and how should you go about stopping them? Simple, the deck has 9 one card starters that lose to 1 Ash if you time it correctly. Now, if you know for a fact that your opponent is playing the Chimera Branded build, you might as well just let the Branded Fusion resolve so that you can use your Ash on Mirror Swords Knight. The one drawback is that they can tribute summon the Burfomet or normal summon Gazelle and already have everything, and then you still lose. So sometimes the correct thing to do is to Ash the first thing that actually happens, but don't Ash something like a Gazelle or Cornfield Coatl. But these cards do lose a really big time to Jewel and Logbird, especially Cornfield. The Chimera deck actually has so many searchers, like literally almost every single one of their cards is either a searcher or a card that leads to a search. And it's not like it was really trying to search on draw phase, so they can't really play around Jewel, which means that if you draw it, you know for a fact that it's always gonna resolve. And exactly like I said, this deck is not really a Despia deck, even though it does have the same flaws as the typical Despia deck. For example, this deck still gets annihilated by Anti-Spell, D-Barrier, Non-Fusion Area, and Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. One of these cards, only one, and I promise you that they're not gonna be happy. I mean, their deck is not really packed with a lot of utility. All they really have going for them would be their main engine, some extenders, hand shops, and then an extra... They have their main engine, some extenders, hand shops, and then an extra deck of like 15 fusion monsters. So yeah, they can't really out floodgates if they can't go into their extra deck. And they can't go into their extra deck if you don't allow them to go into their extra deck. So yeah, try to prevent them from fusion summoning. Easier said than done, I know. Because obviously stopping them when you go first is the easy part. The really hard part is stopping them when they go second. As I said, Ash on the Mirror Swords Knight is definitely one of the best things that you can do, and also Droll is really good, but Valor and Imperm are still not too bad. The one issue with cards like Valor and Imperm and Ghost Mourner is that if they hard draw something like the Chimera Fusion, they can chain, and then they can dodge your negation card. A little annoying when that happens, but oh well, it is what it is. If you want a true high impact that's really gonna put a dent in their play, try Retaliating C. So whenever they use any spell card to special summon, which means like literally every card in their deck, you're going to be able to summon to the Retaliating Sea, and it's kind of gonna act like a Macrocosmos. So their fusion materials are gonna get banished, which means they're not gonna be triggering their plus one effect, and also their Chimera fusion is gonna get banished, which is absolutely huge. Now, since you are summoning a monster on your own turn, you're also allowing them to go into Guardian Chimera on turn one, which means destroy the Retaliating Sea and draw two cards, but it's not really the end of the world. They still committed their normal summon, and they were probably gonna pass on no interruptions outside of some hand shops. And things could absolutely be worse. 
And even if they randomly draw a call by the grave or if they have cross out, it's not like they're trying to play retaliating C for cross out, so it's gonna work out really well for you. Because Ash isn't always gonna be resolving. But yeah, obviously since retaliating C is good since it banishes cards, I think you can already understand that Shifter is also really good. But not everybody can play Shifter, so there's no reason for me to cover it. Oh, and don't try to be crafty with cards like DD Crow, Ghost Bell, Nibiru, or like freaking Bestial Monsters. They all suck, and they're not gonna solve any of your problems. If your opponent successfully combos off, which I can guarantee you he will if you only have these kind of hand shops, you're gonna be regretting the fact that you play these cards. And you see, board breakers aren't any better. As a matter of fact, one of the worst ways to deal with this deck is via the usage of board breakers. Like, Dark Ruler does absolutely nothing because their fusion monster, Chimera, doesn't do anything on the field. They still have the graveyard effect of Mirror Swords Knight, and they can still summon Garden Chimera on your own turn. So ironically, drawing Retaliating C as your 6 card is actually not too bad. But yeah, if you're really that desperate to play board breakers and you don't really have anything else, you might as well just go with Super Poly and evenly. I mean, they obviously suck, but at least Super Poly can be used if your opponent ends on the Chimera Fusion and something like Mirror Jade or DPE. You fuse both away for Dragos Tapelia, and then your opponent magically ends on less interruptions than if he only ended on the Chimera Fusion. Because ironically, if he does that, your Super Poly is gonna be way worse since you're gonna have to fuse your own Dark Monster. And since you're already losing a card with the end phase effect of the Chimera Fusion, the Super Poly is gonna be really expensive. Oh, and speaking of which, that's the reason why board breakers are really awful. So you see, when you draw hand shops against this kind of deck, you know that to a certain extent your hand shops are gonna be doing something, but for the board breakers, they can just get ripped away on the end phase with the Chimera. So you could have a Super Poly in your hand and still never really have a chance to resolve it. Oh, and whatever you do, try to stay really far away from cards that target their cards because the graveyard effect of Coatl is really nasty here. The other good board breaker to play would be evenly matched, but even then, it's not that great. It definitely doesn't suck and actually covers a lot of ground because it's good against other kind of decks, but it's not a perfect card. The thing about evenly is that, again, you're gonna be losing a card, you're gonna be losing your battle phase, and then your opponent still has the Mirror Swords Knight to negate one of your monster effects. So you've got four cards in your hand and your opponent still has a little bit of stability and a negation and some hand shops potentially in the hand. But at least you probably took care of the Chimera Fusion quickly spell and the ability to summon Garden Chimera. Because Chimera Fusion can only be used on the main phase and you really have to abuse this to your advantage. But deadass, your options outside of hand shops are really limited so these are the only good board breakers that I recommend and even then they're not even that great. The good news for you if you're playing against the Chimera deck is that the hand shops that beat the deck are hand shops that you should be playing anyways. Like Ash, Droll, and Veiler should already be in your main deck this format. And then for the side deck, I mean Anti-Spell is really popular anyways, and Retaliating C is getting better and better because it's also good against other decks. But I will be making a video just on Retaliating C very soon. But yeah, to sum it all up, I really recommend main decking 3 Ash, 3 Joel, 3 Imperm, and if you really have the space, 3 Veiler and 3 Ghost Mourner in order to be really well prepared. And then for the side deck, 3 Anti Spell or 3 D Barrier, as well as 3 copies of Retelling C should do the job. As long as you know how to time your Ash correctly, you should be fine because the other hand shops are really self explanatory. The deck is very linear and the combos are not complicated. I mean, it's not a hardcore combo deck, so don't overthink anything. Anyways, that's all I had for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts about this deck in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.